Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A subcompact sedan from Suzuki, the 2021 Desire GL AGS and a mid-sized SUV from Honda, the CRV SX Diesel 9AT AWD Honda Sensing, plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mid-sized SUVs, the Mitsubishi Montero Sport GT 4x4 Automatic versus the Toyota Fortuner G 4x2 Automatic. On Autopedia, we'll talk about what an engine overhaul entails, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the opening of Isuzu Bakaor as our special feature. next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Auto Focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Your city is about to change. Are you ready? Ready to rise? Ready to rock? Ready to go. Ready for more? Ready to rule the city. The all-new Honda City. Ready to rule. Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Suzuki. The battle for sales is fierce in the lower subcompact sedan segment. Cars checks out one of the challengers in the segment the 2021 Suzuki Desire GL Plus AGS. When the Suzuki Desire first arrived in the country, it was marketed as the sedan version of the Swift Hatchback. That was then. These days, the subcompact has dropped the Swift tag and is just known as the Desire which is all well and good as the new revamped exterior gives the Desire its own distinct identity and roof line. The 2021 Suzuki Desire GL Plus takes up a smallish footprint on the road. 3,995mm long, 1,735mm wide, and 1,515mm tall. But it comes with a 2,450mm long wheelbase and clears the ground by 145mm. The Desire GL Plus exterior is striking with a new body colored bumper design that frames the black grille with chrome garnish, a large Suzuki emblem, and the front fog lamp. The halogen multi reflector headlamps also look striking and functional. Not as striking are the 15 inch alloy wheels strapped by 18565R15 tires. Standard exterior features in the Desire GL include body colored outside door mirrors with integrated turn signals that power adjust and fold, intermittent windshield wipers with washer, and front and rear mud flaps.
for an entry-level subcompact sedan, the Desire GL comes with a decent amount of interior and comfort and convenience features. It's got remote entry into a relatively roomy interior for a four-door, five-passenger sedan with a smallish footprint. The fabric seats look and feel contemporary and comfortable. The front seats slide and recline with driver also benefiting from a height adjuster. Rear seat passengers can enjoy benefits of the fold-down center armrest with cup holders. The Desire GL also has the standard power amenities, windows, door locks, steering. The dash and instrument panel look contemporary and quite functional with everything from speedometer and tachometer to displays for clock, outside temperature, fuel consumption, driving range. The tiltable three-spoke urethane steering wheel comes with controls for audio and hands-free phone. It's got air conditioning with heater and pollen filter as well as rear vents. The Desire GL interior also meets many of the needs of modern living and motoring. These include front and rear door pockets, front console box with cup holders, glove box and 12 volt accessory sockets. For storage of bigger items, there's a truck that has 378 liters of usable space. The GL Plus comes with a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment audio unit with AM FM radio, USB and Bluetooth connectivity, micro SD card slot for audio and video files, GPS navigation, aux in and front and rear speakers. The Desire is powered by a K12M inline 4 gasoline engine with multi point fuel injection that generates 82 PS at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 113 Nm of torque at 4,200 RPM. In the Desire Plus, the engine is submitted to Suzuki's AGS or Auto Gearshift system, which is also known as the Automatic Manual Transmission. According to Suzuki, the AGS is basically a manual transmission without need for a clutch pedal for the driver. Electric motors operate the clutch system during gear shifts which are mainly determined by engine RPM. In full automatic mode, one can drive the Desire GL Plus like one drives a vehicle with more conventional automatic transmission while still benefiting from the fuel economy of manual transmissions. In manual mode, one can also control gear shifts on the Desire GL Plus like driving, toggling up or down the gears using the stick shift. The Desire ride and handling can compare favorably with other entry-level compact sedans. The suspension features McPherson struts with coil springs in front and torsion beam with coil springs in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs in the front wheels and leading and trailing drums in the rear. The Desire GL Plus also comes with driver assist and safety systems. The 2021 Desire GL now comes with an electronic stability program which helps the driver keep control of the vehicle on the verge of a skid. Still standard in the Desire GL are anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, and rear parking sensors. Other standard safety and security features in Desire are dual airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts, and 2-point lap belt for one, 2 isofix child seat anchors and child seat teether anchorages, child proof rear door locks, side impact door beams, engine immobilizer, high mount stop lamp. The Suzuki Desire GL Plus is listed at 708,000 pesos. If you like to experience Suzuki's auto gear shift, try booking a test drive. Maybe the experience can convince you to take one home. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Make looking good easy with the Mirage G4. 
Make long distance easy with the Mirage G4. Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. There's a new premium 7-seater SUV in town and it comes with a watch. It's from Subaru, a brand known more for great handling vehicles with symmetrical all-wheel drive systems and boxer engines. Play Subaru with all the trappings of premium SUVs get a warm welcome on local shores. Motor Image Pilipinas, exclusive local distributor of Subaru, certainly hopes so even with the Subaru Evoltis 2.4 Touring EyeSight priced with a good helping of premium at 3.48 million pesos. In the press statement announcing the arrival of the Evoltis, Jerry Hernandez, country manager of Motor Image Pilipinas, said that Subaru's entry into the premium 7-seater SUV is a spacious, feature-packed model with the best safety measure with EyeSight technology as standard. The Evoltis, also known as the Ascent in the North American market, has excellent handling, drivability, and power, hallmarks of a Subaru vehicle built on the Subaru Global platform and equipped with symmetrical all-wheel drive, he added. The spacious all of 4,700 liters and richly appointed cabin offers a 2 2 3 seating configuration, featuring two captain's chairs in the middle row. The made-in-the-US Evoltis is powered by the new FA24, a 2.4-liter turbocharged boxer engine. This generates 260 horsepower and 375 Nm of torque. Its infotainment system comes with a 14-speaker, 792-watt Harman Kardon sound system, a statement enough that the Evoltis can rightly claim premium status. Only one variant is available in the Philippines, Subaru Evoltis 2.4 Touring EyeSight. But buyers have a choice of five colors, Crystal White Pearl, Ice Silver Metallic, Crystal Black Silica, Crimson Red Pearl, and Abyss Blue Pearl. The first 50 customers who register online at www.subaru.asia slash Evoltis and then complete purchase of the 7-seater Subaru will receive a limited edition Evoltis watch. Mitsubishi Motors Philippines has extended its hot promo deals for the Mirage, the Mirage G4, the Expander, Montero Sport, and the Strata. Also extended until the end of May is the low down payment offer for the Mitsubishi L300. Buyers can bring home a Mirage and Mirage G4 with an all-in down payment of 28,000 pesos. One can drive home the Mitsubishi Expander 7-seater MPV with an all-in down payment of 58,000 pesos. The Strata pickup is being offered with a 128,000 peso all-in down payment. The 7-seater SUV Montero Sport can be driven home with an all-in down payment of 168,000 pesos. The dependable Mitsubishi L300 can begin hauling cargo or passenger for you with a down payment of 88,000 pesos. Looking for a Suzuki to bring home this summer? You have until the end of May to avail yourselves of the desire to excel, ride in style, and Suzuki Grand Deals promos. Suzuki Philippines has extended its promos launch for the month of April to the end of May. These deals include one that will help buyers save up to 90,000 pesos for the Desire GL Plus AGS and a 68,000 peso low down payment scheme for the Suzuki Ortiga. Also extended until May 31 are the Suzuki Grand Deals, low down payments of 120,000 pesos for the XL7, 49,000 pesos for the Espresso, and 8,000 pesos for the Sayas. Extended until June 30 is the Shall We Drive Doraemon promo which gives buyers of the Desire exclusive Doraemon merchandise kits. Toyota Motor Philippines is taking a two-pronged approach to provide its patrons with fast, reliable service while prioritizing safety for both customers and staff. Toyota and its dealerships are accelerating digital capabilities while enhancing on-site operations to provide worry-free customer service. As early as May last year, Toyota launched MyToyota.ph to allow Toyota vehicle owners or would-be buyers to conveniently set appointments, choose a dealer, select the service they need, and even make special requests for specific car needs. Toyota and its dealerships develop websites and virtual showrooms to help vehicle owners and buyers to check out their dream cars and get information about them, including deals on offer from the comfort of their homes. 
Meanwhile, Toyota dealerships are adapting new best practices to be able to interact with possible buyers as safety as possible while complying with IATF mandated health and safety protocols. Toyota Makati Incorporated or TMI is among dealerships adapting to new normal or dealership operations. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Live extra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. The Mitsubishi Montero Sport and the Toyota Fortuner have been battling for dominance of the local mid-sized SUV market for years now. This edition of Head to Head pits the 2020 Montero Sport GT 4x4 Automatic against the 2021 Fortuner 2.4 liter 4x2 G Automatic in a spec to spec comparison. 7 seater SUVs have become the dream family vehicle of Filipinos. Automakers and distributors like Mitsubishi and Toyota have been one upping each other, providing the best 7 seater SUVs to Pinoy families. In the midsize SUV segment, Mitsubishi offers the Montero Sport while Toyota offers the Ford Tutor. Among the latest lineup of Mitsubishi's 7-seater SUV is the Montero Sport GT 4x4 Automatic. It is 4,785mm long, 1,850mm wide, and 1,805mm tall, and with 218mm minimum ground clearance. The Montero Sport fascia features Mitsubishi's defense shield design with large combination turn signals and fog lamps. Other external features include LED rear combination lamp and 18-inch two-tone six-spoke alloy wheels. In Toyota's 7-seater midsize SUV lineup is the Fortuner 2.4L 4x2G automatic, which is 4,795mm long, 1,855mm wide, and 1,835mm tall. Toyota equipped the Fortuner 2.4LG with bi-beam headlights with LED daylight running lights, bulb front turn signal lights, and black and silver front grille. LED daylight running lights, bulb front turn signal lights, and black and silver front grille. It also comes with LED rear combination lamp and line guide, silver painted back door garnish, color keyed outside door handles, and intermittent windshield wipers with time adjust, and 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 265-65 R17 tires. The Montero Sport GT4 wheel drive is powered by a 2.4 liter inline 4 cylinder diesel engine with variable geometry turbo and the Mitsubishi innovative valve timing electronic control that generates 181 PS at 3,500 revolutions per minute and 430 Nm of torque at 2,500 RPM. The engine is mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission with sports mode that can send power to all four wheels when necessary via the Super Select 4 wheel drive 2 system. The suspension system uses double wishbones with foil springs and stabilizer bar at front and three link foil springs with stabilizer bar at the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs on all four wheels. 
underneath the hood of the Toyota 4 Tutor 2.4 L4 by 2G Automatic is the 2,393cc 2G DFTV diesel engine with 16 valves, DOHC, variable nozzle turbo, and air-cooled intercooler that generates 150 PS at 400 Nm of torque. The engine drives the rear wheels by a 6-speed automatic transmission with drive mode select. The suspension uses double wishbones in front and a multi-link system in the rear. The 4-tuner brake system uses ventilated discs on all four wheels. The Montero Sport GT 4x4 arrived with three rows of leather upholstery seats for seven. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes and comes with controls for instrument cluster and the multimedia entertainment system. Interior comfort and convenience features include an 8-inch full LCD instrument cluster, smart keyless entry system with start-stop engine button, dual-zone automatic climate control system, power tailgate with keyless operation system. It is also equipped with USB ports, 12-volt socket, and 220-volt power outlet. This Montero Sport Multimedia Entertainment System features an 8-inch screen, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. The Fortuna 2.4 LG comes with keyless entry, push-start function, and comfortable fabric seats for 7 occupants. The driver's seat manually adjusts 6 ways, the front passenger 4 ways. The middle row seats slide, and recline, and can split 60-40, and one-touch tumble function for easy access to the third row seating for two that reclines and splits 50-50. Other interior features include an instrument panel with 4.2-inch TFT, urethane steering wheel that tilts and telescopes and comes with controls for the multi-information display, the audio system, and phone to voice command function. Adding to comfort and convenience are power windows, speed sensing door locks, air conditioning with manual controls, and three 12-volt accessory outlets. The infotainment system uses a 7-inch display audio with AM-FM radio, Bluetooth, 6 speakers, and comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Smart Device Link. The Montero Sport GT 4-wheel drive is equipped with active stability control, hill start assist, trailer stability assist, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, hill descent control, blind spot warning with lane change assist, ultrasonic miss acceleration mitigation, and rear cross traffic alert. Mitsubishi also fitted it with multi-around monitor that features cameras mounted on the front and rear sides. Other safety features include 7 SRS airbags, 3-point seat belts for 7, and isofix and teether anchors. Standard safety features in the 2.4 L4x2G automatic include SRS airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 7, isofix and teether anchors, and child protection locks in the rear doors. It is also equipped with anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, vehicle stability assist with traction control, hill start assist control, and reverse camera and clearance sonar with two sensors in front and four in the rear. The Montero Sport and the Fortuner already have large followings among Filipinos. The new variant will surely add more even amid a segment that has more competitors. Isuzu D-Max, into new heights. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrator Restaurant, only for the foodies. Humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle, ourselves. New Ford Ranger FX4 Max. Live the Ranger life. Life is about making decisions, acting with certainty, confidence, and grit. Create something lasting and big. Driving to make a difference. Hino.
Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. The long-time partnership between Isuzu Philippines and the Ayala Group bears another fruit, a new dealership in Cavite, the Isuzu Bagoor. In early January this year, Suzu Philippines Corporation IPC and the Isuzu Automotive Dealership Incorporated or IADI, a wholly owned subsidiary of AC Motors of the Ayala Group, signed a contract for the establishment of a new dealership in Cavite. Around two months later, Isuzu Bacoor opened and as a 5,000 square meter facility housing a sprawling showroom that can display four light commercial vehicles or LCVs and a service shop with 13 bays for LCVs and two for CVs that can cater to big tractor head trucks. A simple ceremony marked the official opening of Isuzu Bacoor attended by IPC executives led by President Hajime Koso, Executive Vice President Shojiro Sakoda, and Sales Division Head Joseph Bautista, AC Motors President Antonio Zara, IADI Chief Operating Officer Alex Pagio, and Branch Head Valance Mauricio. Today marks the inauguration of our new dealership here in Bacoor to our partner dealer group Isuzu Automotive Dealership Inc. or IADI. Isuzu Bacoor is our 46th dealer in the Philippines. Located along Molina Boulevard, the Isuzu Bacoor boasts a total combined floor area of 5,000 square meters with showroom big enough to showcase up to six light vehicles and has two service bay exclusively dedicated for trucks to serve our customer. Isuzu President Koso San is buoyed by the opening of another dealership even amidst the pandemic thanks to its long partnership with IADI. We are proud that amidst the pandemic, Isuzu is still able to open a new outlet to cater to more customers in the nationwide. Many thanks to our long-time dealer group, Isuzu Automotive Dealership Inc., which also handled our dealer operation in Araban, Pasig, Risa, and Taitai. Isuzu Bacoor is among the first dealerships to comply with the Isuzu Outlet Standard design, which among other things manifests Isuzu's core identity of durability and reliability. It is also the 11th dealership opened by IADI and its long history of partnering with Isuzu. This is our 11th uh, Isuzu dealership and if I may say the Ayala Group, we have a long history in the automotive business. We have more than 30 years history in automotive, oh, of course different brands but Isuzu is one of our proudest brands. You know, we've been part of the Isuzu business in the Philippines from the beginning. We are partners with uh, Isuzu in, in the manufacturing and distribution. And we are also the biggest dealer of so, uh, Isuzu Motors Philippines through our uh, Ayala Group dealership. Opening a showroom and service center in Bacoor makes sense for Isuzu and IADI. Cavite is really the profile of our customers here are small, medium uh, enterprises and Cavite also have many industrial parks where the, the requirement for commercial vehicles for Isuzu trucks is really huge. And uh, this is one of the most promising and biggest market of Isuzu in Luzon, the province of Cavite. While the pandemic has affected passenger vehicle sales, it hasn't affected commercial truck sales. And this is another good reason for opening a dealership in Cavite. Actually, the sales of Isuzu is very strong even during the, the pandemic. Our Trab is one of the, the best-selling models of Isuzu in 2020. It's one of the cabin chassis segment. is the only model that did not have a, a decline in sales versus 2019. That's why we think this new normal will be a good opportunity for Isuzu to uh, sell more to our customers. At the opening of Isuzu Bacoor, IADI and IPC revealed that they are working on opening another dealership in Cavite. We are also about to start construction of a another dealership of uh, Isuzu that will be in Das Marinas, you know, so also within the city of Cavite. Shows how uh, bullish we are about the prospects of Cavite as a local market. The establishment of Isuzu Bacor is part of Piadi's two-pronged strategy to capture one of the fastest growing market in this region, which is Cavite. This dealership will serve Northern Cavite customer while a second dealership will be established in Dasmarinas City by end of 2021 
to cater to the southern municipalities. IPC and Isuzu Bacor are looking forward to visits from Isuzu vehicle owners and those looking to become Isuzu vehicle owners. To all today viewers, especially those residing in Bacor City, we invite you please come and visit Isuzu Bacor, located along Morino Blueberry, and check out our latest product and promotion. Maraming salamat po. Cavite has a lot going for these days. Large productive residential communities and progressive industrial parks. And now, Isuzu Bacoor. And soon, Isuzu Das Marines. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Honda has just rolled out the new CRV. It arrived late in 2020 but just in time for the Burr months. Traditionally, the best quarter for selling automobiles. This edition of Car Review takes a look at what the top of the line CRV offers. The 2020 Honda CRV has just made its digital debut in the local market, teeming with exciting options for seven seater mid size SUVs. Can it stand out in the crowd? Honda certainly believes it can, especially its top of the line variant, the Honda CRV SX Diesel 9 Automatic, all wheel drive with Honda Sensing. The 2020 Honda CRV. Now 4,623 millimeters long, 1,855 millimeters wide, and 1,668 millimeters tall, with a 2,662 millimeter long wheelbase and 208 millimeter ground clearance, arrives with a refreshed fascia. The most noticeable change is the more aggressive looking bumper that holds the LED fog lamps. The chrome bumper accents and the chrome grille wing add sophistication to the more commanding CRV look. The CRV rear also got a makeover with smoke tinted rear taillights and redesigned bumper. Differentiating the SX from its lesser though no less good looking siblings are the panoramic sunroof, sequential front turn signals, as well as 18 inch alloy wheels. Then there's a cool and convenient hands-free power tailgate. The top-of-line CRV also gets roof rails, full LED headlights with auto leveling 
and high beam support system, power adjustable and power folding door mirrors with side turn signals, auto rain sensing front wipers, intermittent with washer and auto wipe rear wipers, tailgate spoiler, silver bumper skid garnish, shark's fin antenna, and mud guards. The CRV is not to be left behind by the smart entry with push start system bandwagon. This comes standard in all 2020 CRV variants made available locally. This makes it very convenient to get into the spacious cabin of the CRV. The CRV SX can sit seven comfortably in black leather upholstered seats that complement the piano black and two tone wood trim finish. The third row seat splits 50 50. The top of line CRV features a front passenger seat that power adjusts four ways. The driver is spoiled by a seat that comes with an eight way power adjust with four way lumbar support. The three spoke leather upholstered steering wheel tilts and telescopes, making it very convenient for finding the perfect driving position. It comes with controls for the multi info display and the TFT instrument cluster, audio, and hands free phone. From the comfortable perch, the driver has every control within reach, including those for the intelligent dual zone automatic air conditioning system. Also within easy reach is the 7 inch touchscreen advanced display audio with navigation system that comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, and plays through 8 speakers that includes 4 tweeters. The CRV SX also comes with wireless charger, USB ports in the center console, a rear center console, roof air conditioning vents with independent controls. Underneath the hood of the CRV SX Diesel 9 automatic all wheel drive is a 1.6 liter DOHC IDTEC turbo diesel engine that generates 120 PS at 4000 revolutions per minute and maximum torque of 300 newton meters at 2000 rpm. The engine drives all four wheels via nine-speed automatic transmission. Over the years, the CRV has been known to provide a car-like ride on city streets and well-paved roads with the versatility of a higher ground clearance to take on rougher byways. The 2020 Honda CRV continues this tradition especially with an all-wheel drive variant that rides on 235 by 60 R18 103H tires and a suspension featuring front McPherson struts and multi-link system in the rear. Stopping power comes from an all-wheel disc brake system ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Honda has made driving and riding the CRV all the more safer with a G-Body, dual front SRS, side and side curtain airbags, the anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, three-point ELR seat belts for seven, ISOFIX, and child safety lock. Driving is made all the easier with the various systems like Agile Handling Assist, Vehicle Stability Assist, Hill Start Assist, Honda Lane Watch, Multi-View Reverse Camera with Dynamic Guidelines, front and rear corner sensors. The 2020 Honda CR-V SX goes a little bit farther in helping driving all the more safe with Honda Sensei, a suite of cutting edge driver assist functions that include adaptive cruise control, low speed follow, collision mitigation braking system, lane keep assist system, road departure mitigation, forward collision warning and lane departure warning. The top of line CR-V is available in four colors, cosmic blue metallic, Ignite Red Metallic, Modern Steel Metallic, Platinum White Pearl. One has to add 20,000 pesos to the 2,150,000 pesos suggested retail price. The Honda CRV has always had a good standing in the local compact SUV market that started back in the day when it was assembled here and sold in numbers that impressed even Honda Japan. Its popularity waxed and waned as the competition stepped up. The latest iteration could do more waxing than waning. 
in today's really crowded market segment. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Sometimes your car can have the dreaded O word. And by O, we mean overhaul. We'll explain to you in as simple terms as possible what an engine overhaul actually entails and what is done when you overhaul an engine. Overhauling an engine simply means that you have to take the engine, take it all apart, and then replace some parts inside. And the parts that are almost always replaced with an overhaul are these things. The piston rings. These are the first ones to go inside the engine. As you notice, there's a bit of spring in this. So this is what seals the piston to the combustion chamber and over time, wear and tear. And obviously this thing is operating in hundreds of degrees Celsius environment. These tend to fail and not to be as springy no more. So the actual part on a normal overhaul engine is just to replace the piston rings, which are these things. There's normally four of them now in a modern engine. And there's, a oil, there's the oil ring land here, which is a bit hard to get out. I need a special pick to get it out. But these are the things that are replaced in a normally overhauled engine. This part is cheap. It's getting to it that's expensive. And the things that you have to take out and the things that gets replaced, that add up to the bill. The primary cause of an engine that needs to be overhauled is number one, old age. By old age, we mean 150,000, sometimes 200,000 kilometers. And it also depends on the engine. Yes, we have all heard stories of the Toyota that lasted a million miles, the Mercedes-Benz engine that lasted another million miles, or 300,000 kilometers on the original engine on a 1990 Honda. Those are more of the exceptions rather than the norm. Normally, an engine's life here in the Philippines is anywhere from 150,000 to maybe 250,000 if you're lucky. By that time, if it's still running great, good for you. But an overhaul is not out of the question with that age of an engine. So when you overhaul engine, these are all the parts. Actually, this is not all the parts. It's not even all the parts. This is some of the parts of a Subaru engine that we're overhauling. The engine block is not here. It's actually in the machine shop. What adds up to the cost of the overhaul are things like this. When you overhaul the engine, you need new gaskets for, these, for this, new gaskets for that. All the rubber here gets replaced. There, there, rubber seals. Everything gets replaced and this is also a good time to check for wear items like this is an engine mount, if it's already soft or not. This is apparently still in pretty good condition. And then it's also a time for a general cleaning. You clean everything. This is the valve cover, you clean the gunk off the camshafts, you clean the gunk off here. This is the timing chain cover. This one we just freshly cleaned, so this seal has to be replaced as well. So all of the little things do add up. That's what makes an overhaul expensive. How do you know if your car needs an overhaul? The usual classic signs are number one, white smoke coming out of the exhaust. That simply means that the piston ring isn't doing its job anymore. So the oil, which is normally should be here, goes up to the combustion chamber here and then it gets burned. When oil burns, it's usually a white smoke that comes out. So goes out the tail by white smoke. When you pull up the dipstick, white smoke comes out of that one. That's a sure sign that you already need an overhaul. Paliado, it's not idling properly. It's not idling correctly. It's idling pretty rough. The engine is shaking a lot. That's a sign, but not necessarily an overhaul. Overheating is another sign that may or may not be a complete overhaul. There is such a thing as a top overhaul where only the cylinder head part have a compression test done. That's another pretty much sure way to figure out if your car needs an overhaul or not. It may or may not be caused by the piston ring. It could also be caused by the valve is not shutting off, the clearance is off, and then as, among other things, head problems, but at least it eliminates some of the possible things that might cause an overhaul. Don't be scared of the word overhaul. Like I said, it is not a death sentence. It's not a person. An engine can always be rebuilt. It's just a matter of time and money. Car has sentimental value to you, somebody drove it through a flood, you can't part with it, engine needs an overhaul, not a problem. It can always be brought back to its former glory if you want to. 
Yes, it's stressful. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's a drain on your wallet. But unlike a person going to a hospital, the car can always, always be resuscitated back to life. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your one has been made easier. And that's all of Focus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.